Okay. And there's that. I just think we found another bug. Yeah, probably right. I shot it in the water, by the way. And I can sit, cl cl I'm actually clipping that, by the way. Without a doubt, ship combat will be the largest skill cap in this game. Knowing what to do and what not to do will make or break whether you sail away in victory with bountiful loot or go down with the ship in tragic loss. With Naval being the name of the game, let's see if we can teach you how to lose less and win more. I want to lead with the most important rule right out of the gate, and that's to avoid the broadside of ships as often as possible. While there will be times it feels unavoidable, it is always going to be in your best interest to position yourself in front of or behind them so you can cannon freely without fear of retaliation. Sail maintenance is huge and often what people are guilty of getting lazy at. Aim to catch the wind as best you can unless it's your goal to sail against it then naturally aim the sails towards the wind. The exception to this rule is the sloop, where you either choose to catch full wind or otherwise keep the sails faced forward. It doesn't make any sense, but it is what it is. Raising your sails will slow you down, but it will also allow for tighter turns and better control over your boat. The bigger the boat, the longer it will take to raise the sails and the more you'll have to raise to see a difference. With practice though, you'll find the sweet spot that allows for the dreaded death circle which is when you raise your sails and turn your boat just enough that you can cannon all around the enemy and make new holes rather than just a few in the same spot. Naturally, one of the hardest things to get down pat is cannoning. A few things you need to know is that you very rarely will be aiming at the target, but rather in front of or behind that target, depending on the angle you take. I find a great way to judge your angle would be to shoot your cannon to see the path and then adjust accordingly. Remember to wait out the wave and to keep in mind that based on your ship's speed, the turns you take, as well as the enemies, all can play a role in your cannon's trajectory. All ships have both a lower and upper deck, even though not all ships are made to be equal. That being said, it should go without saying to aim for the lower decks when trying to sink an enemy ship. Upper deck shots put little water in the ship by comparison, and none whatsoever in a galleon until water in the bottom deck has filled up. The exception to this rule, however, is when the enemy is alert and actually firing back on you. At this point, it should be your priority to aim at the enemy's cannon line to disrupt their cannon pressure and ideally kill them, forcing them on the defensive and opening up a freer opportunity to put further pressure on the sink. Cursed cannonballs are your friend, but also treated like health potions in any video game you've ever played. You'll often find yourself with a decent handful that you'll be too scared to use in case you need them for a spicier, scarier fight in the future. But these are very strong tools and they're meant to be used. If you don't, there's a good chance the person you face next will and sink you for the reluctance. Here's a quick list I made illustrating what I believe to be best to worst, but at the end of the day, fights are always circumstantial. So use what you feel fits the situation best. I'll also put a link down below to show you all the different types that are in the game, along with their specific uses. Now chain shots are best friend material and one of the strongest things you can use against a crew. Because they are heavier than cannonballs, you do have to aim higher for more distance. But when used, they will instantly break any mast, capstan, or helm, disabling the ship's mobility. This is an extremely effective tool that allows you to take control of the fight's pacing and denying them a proper means to respond, giving you plenty of room to pummel the ship or even safely bored once you felt you've put in enough pressure. Blunder bombs are a personal favorite of mine for many reasons. However, in terms of ship combat, they are vital in controlling the enemy's pressure against you. For example, if opening with a chain shot, you notice the enemy pulling up their mast, use the blunder bombs for both CC and damage to disrupt the action and force the mast back down. With enough pressure, you might knock them off or even kill them keeping them from recovering and repairing the ship for retaliation. Firebombs have a place in fights, but to me are very circumstantial. They are mainly used to be a nuisance, however I have found them to be most useful if you see a keg in the enemy's crow's nest where fire on the mast will blow it up. Otherwise just reserve fire for galleons where putting it out is very tedious, or for boarding sloops and brigs, which we'll get to here next. 
even though you'll find too many people to do this carelessly, you do have to remember that boarding enemy ships plays a major role in ship combat as well. Assuming you've applied everything you've learned thus far, naval alone simply may not be enough. If you've put pressure on a ship or even have a nice opening for a board, please feel free to take the opportunity. If the enemy is busy repairing the damage you've done, this forces them to go below deck to deal with it, providing you a perfect opportunity to get on an anchor or slay out any unsuspecting pirates to ensure the sink. I have a few videos I'll post in the description below that shows how to properly do this. If you've successfully boarded a boat, but you have few, if any, holes, sometimes you just have to camp a boat for a bit. It sounds toxic, I know, but as long as it's your goal to sink them and not to bucket them just for camping's sake, then it's usually sanctioned. Easy ways to ensure some ships sink are to firebomb the upper decks of sloops or brigs, to poke swift holes so that water can get through, but as far as galleons go, spreading massive fire can buy you time and act as a distraction to reboard your ship and fire your cannons. Now, realizing we focus quite a bit on being aggressive towards enemy ships, it's also crucial to understand how to defend your own. For example, even though taking masts down is very beneficial for you, losing your own isn't. Don't forget your own ship maintenance by getting tunnel vision into fighting someone else. Everything you aim to pull off against them, they plan to return in kind, and so making sure you switch between buckets and cannon shots Repairing your wheels and repairing your masts or even resetting the fight can be the difference between sinking or swimming. Harpoons are a very strong tool in your arsenal when used properly. You can either use them to avoid islands, perform swift bootleg turns, or even to pull you closer to the enemy ships that you want to board. Mind you, however, any harpoon can break if a ship either gets too far away from you or sharply turns against it, so judge your distance and switch off to whichever corresponding harpoon is needed to maintain your hold. And lastly, I will try to emphasize this for the people in the back. Please, do not keep kegs on your ship. Now that you're one step closer to being a true pirate legend, it's time you go out there and test your metal with what you've learned. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit that like and subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can always be notified of any upcoming videos. We stream regularly on Twitch at twitch.tv slash copiousjack, with all our links located down below. And remember, it's not about the gold, it's about the glory.